Hello and welcome to another video from Double O Rail. Uh, today we're doing something a little special. Uh, since it's uh, Thanksgiving here in the United States, I thought it'd be a really good time uh, to unbox my uh, Amtrak uh, locomotive here. So this uh, here is an Amtrak P42 Genesis. And I actually have two of these. This is uh, number 150. And in the box below, uh, we have number 91. And then uh, I have a series of uh, coaches here and that actually make up the uh, California Zephyr. And uh, the reason I have this is a couple of years ago, I got the opportunity to go um, out to uh, Utah and back um, on the uh, California Zephyr. Uh, so I believe I went from um, Chicago to Salt Lake City. And then uh, about a week later, I went back from Salt Lake City to Chicago. And uh, it's definitely a fun trip. Uh, it, it's a little, little rough. If you don't get the sleeping car, I decided to kind of tough it out and uh, just uh, go with the seating. And uh, it was interesting. It was a little cold at some point. Uh, you definitely want to bring a blanket or something like that. I ended up uh, bringing a blanket on the way back. Um, but it was uh, a pretty cool experience. Uh, you got to see a lot of scenery and so on. So I did to actually take, when I went on this trip, I took a ton of photos. And so what I'll do over the next couple of weeks is I'll actually put together an article on the Double O Rail website and I'll announce it in the channel. And when it's available, I'll upload all those photos. I have a couple hundred photos, so it might take me a while to, to upload them. Um, but anyway, what I want to do today, uh, since it's Thanksgiving, was basically unbox all of this and, and get it rolling on the layout and just explain uh, what each of the coaches are um, as we go through it. So um, the first thing I'm going to start off with is uh, this logo. So it's usually run as a double header. Um, so I've got two of these uh, Amtrak uh, G uh, P42 Genesis logos. Um, so let's uh, take a quick look at those and then we'll move on to uh, putting the coaches and stuff. All right, so the detail on this is uh, really, really cool. Um, you can see there it's on par with what we'd expect at, um, from a double O scale um, locomotive. And it does have working lights on the back. Um, and one of the coolest things that it has is um, this basically here is the motor. And um, I'll try to just without breaking it, but it's basically magnetic. Um, so the motor bogey just pops out, so uh, really cool. Uh, so if you need to do any kind of maintenance on it or repairs, uh, it's very, very easy. You don't have to take the loco apart uh, to get to it. And then you basically just uh, make sure you line up the copper um, contacts with that and it should be good to go, more or less. Yeah, um, so it's really slick. I think it's uh, a very cool feature. Um, this thing has uh, plenty of lights and uh, it runs really, really well, and it's extremely heavy. Um, I should probably dig up the um, the scales, um, but like this thing is probably twice as heavy as a uh, Hornby locomotive. It's um, it's pretty substantial, um, and for around the same price too, which is kind of cool. All right, so this, like I said, is a P42 uh, Genesis, and it's in the Phase uh, 5B livery. So I'm gonna go. Uh, put this on the layout and then we'll take a look at the next logo. Okay, so let's uh, open it up and see what we've got here. So, um, just like a pretty standard Hornby box, uh, basically, you know, it's a cardboard lid. And uh, we'll set that aside. Um, has some pretty interesting instructions. Uh, it actually gives you uh, a couple of different uh, train formations here, so you can see. Um, you could have had a P42 with two coaches, a lounge car and a baggage car, a P42 with the P42 40th anniversary, a P42 and then two baggage cars, a coach baggage, two coaches, a diner, a lounge and two sleepers. And these are just example um, warning options. There's also um, a switch to control the lighting, uh, which it tells you about in here, um, tells you that you should be able to use a mini screwdriver as well as um, these two trip pins. And there's also uh, these magnetic trip pins uh, that go in the coupler. Uh, I haven't actually installed these. I just have uh, left them as is. But I suppose I should probably install them at some point. Um, here it tells you how to uh, move the switch for the lights. So you got on, 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 off, and off, on. So if we're, we're gonna probably uh, set this when we do um, our running formations and tells you which lights uh, they control as well and um, tells you how to remove the disassembly uh, 
and how to remove the side ladders and so on. And it says um, the additional lubrication at the time of purchase was not recommended, so don't lubricate it. Um, now it comes in this kind of styrofoam box, it's not quite up to the, got a little bit of bull wrap on it, not quite up to the sort of box of ice that we have for British locomotives, but it's still um, pretty good. And in terms of detailing, it does come with this little extra detailing pack, I'm not going to start digging it out, but basically it's the two magnetic pins and a, um, a part for the top here, which we'll get to later. Um, you do see it comes with this uh, transport uh, piece that just pops out, and um, there isn't actually a screwdriver in here <laughs> that they said was included. Um, but here you go, this is the uh, 91, and again it's a P42 Genesis, and it's a, uh, a pretty nice locomotive. Uh, you can see there, it's got front lights, the livery is pretty good, it's got detailing. A lot of it, some of it's molded, some horns on the top there, and all the lighting detail on the back. So it's it's pretty nice. All right, so um, we'll show you the detailing pack too, since I apparently now need it. Um, you can see there, it's got the two magnetic um, trip pins, and then it's got that exhaust detailing pack that goes on the back there. And again, I'm not going to install that right now. All right, so in terms of coupling, it has this uh, KD type coupler. It's not a KD coupler, but it's a Kato zone um, coupling system, and it seems to work okay. You don't seem to need uh, the magnetic coupling bar uh, to make it work. So hopefully it won't um, backfire on me, but we'll give it a go. All right, so I'm gonna move this over to the layout. There's a couple of things I wanted to show you. Uh, one, this little, uh, knob here on the roof actually controls the light so all you have to do is put a small screwdriver in there and turn it uh, once for lead locomotive twice for trailing and uh, and so on so the instructions there are included in it and the other thing i wanted to point out was it tells you not to operate the locomotive at dcc uh, zero zero the analog address it'll actually cause damage to the locomotive and void the warranty uh, so if you want to run this as an analog you have to use an analog controller it says that you must fit the dcc chip before adding it to a DCC system. So that's just something to keep in mind. It must be how they've got it designed. Okay, so now that we've got two locos on the track, um, we're actually going to look at the Amtrak baggage car. So this is actually the first um, car that's gonna go um, between the, after the locomotive. Um, it has a Kato kinematic coupler. Uh, which looks kind of interesting and um, how to replace with key. okay so you basically you have the magnetic trip pin ones that you normally get and then you have this kinematic coupler um, which creates prototypical close coupling without compromising turning radiuses hmm, that's interesting um, I am not going to mess with that right now and uh, there's an optional tail light PCB um, which I don't think this has so and it has an optional DCC decoder but I don't need to do that either um, also tells you how to install an optional lighting kit and a whole bunch of other cool stuff all right so I think for today though, we're just going to go with our Thanksgiving special here and just ready to get it on the layout um, looks like it's just the car and it is number uh, 1221 uh, set this aside real fast I'm going to put the instructions back in their respective boxes. Uh, maybe not. I'll just let it slide. They're well documented, so. <coughs> okay, so this is basically uh, the baggage car. And it would attach to the train. And it's the first car in the uh, California Zephyr. So I'm going to go put this on the layout and then we'll open the next one. All right, so the next car in the train is the transition sleeper. And again, it's in the phase 4B uh, livery. Uh, so Amtrak seem to uh, sort of do this with their liveries and stuff. So it's supposed to have a 
kinematic coupler included. I'm sure didn't see that in the other box. Um, and so on. So same instructions. Pretty sure they're all going to be the same. So the interesting thing about the transition sleeper, it's different from um, the other uh, sleepers here. This definitely does not have that included in the box. So it must be an optional thing or else uh, they've been taking them out. Yes. Um, so the interesting thing about the transition sleeper is if you see here, it's got the lower um, one on this side and then an upper one on the other and basically what it's for is it'll go like this so the drivers can get from the train through the baggage car into this part of the train so that's why uh, this goes on to the baggage car and then this goes on to the double decker um, part of the train and so this is um, this is kind of hard to find too but um, I got it on eBay so it's kind of cool and of course it's got that cool kind of shiny look. Now it's a slightly different livery, it's the earlier livery, um, but this is how Amtrak uh, run the transition sleeper. Anyway, so I'm going to go put this on the track and we'll move on to the next one. Alright, so the next one in the list here, it, it's in the newer livery, it's in the um, Coach Phase uh, 5 uh, livery, and this is an Amtrak Superliner 1, and it is a coach. And so, this we're going to pop out and again has the same instructions like the other ones uh, same packaging and you can see it's one of these uh, double decker uh, coaches you can see there in the bottom it's got a little um, place for the um, for the DCC chips and stuff so it's kind of cool um, so we'll set that up there and it's got some static on it, uh, but yeah, it looks really, really nice. Now, this one is 34030, and this was hard to find, so I actually have uh, two of these that are numbered the same, so at some point I will have to renumber them, but now I'm going to go put this one on. All right, so next up in our list, like I told you, uh, it's basically the same coach. I will have to... Uh, Get it renumbered at some point. Um, but yeah, same instructions, same bubble wrap, and this time, same coach. Um, but it looks pretty slick. Um, and this is actually how they look too. It's a uh, very interesting looking train. So, um, right. oh, this one has the kinematic coupling in it. So, I may have to check the other boxes. Take a quick look at that. Yeah, this one has the kinematic coupling in it. Um, I'm not going to even try to mess with that. Um, we'll set that aside for now. And I'm going to go uh, put this on the layout, but you can look inside there. Definitely, um, we'll have to look at the coach lighting. It's a um, very, very detailed model. Handrails, boogies, the wheels, pickups. It's all very, very, very high quality. Um, but then it's Japanese, so. I am not surprised one bit. Look at that, that grill right there. It's freaking, that's pretty cool. And again, it's the detail of this thing is, it's real slick. It's very nice, very shiny. All right, so let me go put this on the layout and then we'll move on to the next coach. Okay, so there's four left to go. And um, by the way, I did check the other uh, boxes and I did find the uh, kinematic couplers. So they're just buried in there. Um, so next on the list here is the uh, lounge car and this one is in uh, phase uh, 4B livery so Amtrak really do mix up the stock and the livery uh, quite a bit so it's not unusual to see you know the phase 5 mixed with the phase 4 um, and so on so here is the lounge car and this is actually pretty cool you can see inside there and um, this is kind of like the observation deck on the train. So as you're going through the uh, various different scenic parts, especially in uh, in Colorado and in uh, Utah, you could um, definitely 
uh, see some of the fantastic mountain kind of scenery and stuff. So um, if you ever get opportunity to go check it out, it's really cool. And the, um, the actual lounge car is observation deck thing is really, really slick. So, and they've done a really good job of capturing this. This looks exactly um, the way it is in real life. So they've done a fantastic job. Uh, even down to the boogies, look at the, the grills again, really, really cool. All right, so I'm gonna go put this on the layout and then I've got three more to go and then you guys can see it running. Okay, so next up is the diner. And so this again is in, uh, this is in phase five livery. Um, now these are quite hard to find. I don't know if I was just late to the game looking for these or if um, Keto just, you know, don't release them very often. Um, but they are phenomenally uh, good locos, so, or rolling stock. <sighs> Um, does seem to pick up the static a little bit, but that's not surprising. You can see there on the side, it says dining car. And the detail is just, you can see how shiny this thing is. <laughs> really captures the way they are. And these grills, the marine numbers, everything is really, really slick. Alright, so I'm going to go put this on the layout. And we'll move on to the next one. Uh, so if you're just wondering, the, the, this um, is the dining car. So a um, couple of times a day, um, you'd be seated and um, get a meal and so on there. It wasn't cheap, I can tell you that. And it wasn't bad though. And um, really is your only option. You're on this train for a couple of days. So uh, hitting up the dining car, unless you packed food, it's probably uh, the only option if you want an actual meal. Um, but it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And it was kind of busy. You had to sort of tell them that you were interested and then um, they would call it, give you a time. And then that's the time you went to the dining car and uh, you were then seated and seated with some random people if you were, weren't enough of you there to um, in your party to sort of um, take up a whole table. So I was seated with some random people, but it was, uh, it was definitely interesting. All right, so I'm gonna go put this on a layout and we'll move on to the last two. Okay, so the last two coaches are uh, both sleepers, and they're both in the Phase 5 livery. Uh, this is uh, 32011, and the other one is um, 32011 as well. Uh, it looks like, uh, that's right, I, I could only find one uh, type of sleeper, so I had to duplicate up on it again. Uh, I knew there was something I'd done. Uh, so this is basically the same, uh, same um, sleeper car, and you will notice that this time it's not a transition, it's got them both at the upper level and again the detail is phenomenally girl good and keep in mind this coach cost me less than your standard Hornby Mach 3 coach or Bachman Mach 2 or Mach 1 coach um, so bear that in mind that this was um, cheaper and very very cool all right so I'm going to go put this on the layout and uh, actually what I'll do is I'll just open the other one too and then we can skip ahead to the layout because these are basically the same. Um, now one thing to keep in mind, uh, the California Zephyr sometimes has an extra coach uh, which I believe it would be another coach uh, rather than a sleeper and you put it between the um, lounge car and the uh, and the existing coaches. So again, it's just another one. Other one I just showed you, and we're good to go. So uh, what I'm gonna do next is put these two on the layout. And uh, I've already ran the locos in, so uh, for our Thanksgiving special, we will move on to showing you some shots of this thing on the layout, uh, which will basically be the rest of the video. So um, I thought I would just show you guys this because it's kind of cool. And it's not something that uh, we generally mess with in, in, in the UK or if you're doing uh, British railway modeling in general so I thought it'd be kind of interesting for you guys to have a look at it and um, check it out so uh, also for the folks here in the States uh, you don't always get to see a full California Zephyr uh, running on a British outline uh, layout so it's an opportunity to, to check that out as well alright so uh, I'm guys, gonna let you guys uh, check out 
the rest of the shots on the layout. Hope you guys have a uh, happy Thanksgiving. I'm going to go and uh, once I'm done filming this, edit it up, upload it, and then uh, head off for uh, some time with family. Alright, so hope you enjoyed the rest of the video.